Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm William Trainer, President and CEO of Grand West Transportation. We're a Canadian uh, bus manufacturer located up here in Vancouver and just, uh, just recently making some very big moves uh, into the uh, U.S. market. Oh, hold on here. Yeah, so who is Grand West and what do we do? We manufacture mid-size bus, mid-size multi-purpose transit vehicles for public and commercial enterprises. Uh, we utilize world-class partners to produce our purpose-built vicinity buses, and they are available in CNG, gas, diesel, and our newest model, uh, which is getting a lot of excitement right now, is our new electric uh, vehicle. We've got a very tight capital structure. We have approximately uh, 90, 95 million shares fully diluted. But the key point here is that we have a lot of insider founder ownership. We have over 30% insider founder ownership. Now, where do we compete? Well, we compete in the uh, heavy duty transit market is one segment that we compete in. It's about 6,000 buses annually sold per year. And uh, in the Canadian market space on this, we have 90% market penetration for our mid-size buses. Uh, our mid-size buses uh, are quite, um, they're a little bit smaller. Our buses are usually 30 to 35 foot range in this uh, heavy duty uh, uh, capacity. Uh, they offer lower capital and operating costs. A lot of people are changing their fleets out. If you see a lot of 40-foot buses operating in your current city locations and they're not getting utilization, they've got low ridership on those, that's where ours comes in. And it's a very, uh, very cost-effective to add a 30 or 35-foot where you don't have the high uh, traffic areas. Also, they work very well for a feeder bus as well. Now, and when I'm talking about the market segment, 6,000 is for the heavy duty size. There's the light duty size that we're in as well, and this is in our vicinity LT. This is a new model that we've currently added as well and will be marketed in this year. There's 22,000 annual sales in this light duty market. And our bus is super competitive. We've got some very major competitive advantages. If you can see down there on the lower side, you see a, a bus that's called a cutaway bus. That's currently what is dominating uh, the light duty market space. It's built on a van truck style uh, chassis where they actually put the body on the back of it. Where if you look at our bus, our, light, uh, our vicinity LT, it's purpose built. It looks like a bus, feels like a bus. It's actually the same size and the same weight classification as this cutaway bus. And we offer it with the same powertrain. So it's either got a Ford or a GM powertrain in it. Uh, it comes with hydraulic brakes, so it's very easy to operate. Uh, and in this market segment, we really see a, a huge runway of, of over 1,000 buses a year uh, for this, uh, this segment. Now, you know, what's really getting a lot of attention these days is really the electric bus. We've just entered into the electric. If anybody's been following us, our news releases, we've had a considerable amount of news releases uh, indicating you know, what we've done, how we've entered the market. Uh, we entered the market with a uh, uh, supply agreement from BMW, and we put a BMW battery pack in the bus. The, it's actually put in the low floor section of the bus, so it's uh, the power to weight ratio is very low, center of gravity. And then we looked at how we can bring this, uh, this vehicle to market a lot quicker, and we partnered up with some very, very powerful uh, engineering firms to help us uh, expedite and get this product to market very quickly. Uh, we, will have, we have buses in production right now for our vicinity, uh, LT, our vicinity Lightning electric vehicle. Uh, we have news released uh, a small order that we picked up down in the U.S., and we're really seeing a lot of activity in the, uh, in the EV space these days. Um, I, would, I can comment that our, that our bid uh, team has uh, been getting an awful lot of um, uh, attention 
on our vicinity lightning. And, you know, how do we compete? Where do we compete? Uh, we, in the U.S., um, is really where we got to concentrate on. The Canadian market uh, space, we've done exceptionally well there. As I stated earlier, we have a 90% market capacity, market share in the mid-sized bus range that we're selling in Canada. Um, but currently our sales have been about 90% in Canada and about 10% in the U.S. So we really got to expand our, our sales capability in the United States. And we have a very robust uh, expansion plan in place. We're expanding our, our dealer network as we speak, uh, really concentrating for the EV market on the, on the West Coast, on the California side. We've gone ahead and we've put in a, uh, we've purchased some, some property in Washington State that's very close to our headquarters up in Vancouver. It's about a 30 minute drive from our headquarters. And we're putting in our US headquarters in Washington State. Uh, putting in Washington makes perfect sense because it's very close to our facility up in, up in Canada. Uh, and in order to really penetrate the US market, you need to have, uh, you need to have assembly and you need to have um, manufacturing in the US. Uh, so we think that this is uh, really going to enhance our, our sales capability. Now, when we look at a uh, company in a whole, our production. So our Washington State facility will be able to uh, produce up to 1,000 units per year. With our contract manufacturing partners, we can produce an extra 2,000. So we have a capability right now of about 3,000 units per year. When we're looking at the buses that are actually being sold in the US, a lot of them have to meet what we call Buy America qualifications, uh, which means that 70% of the bus has to be sourced, the parts have to be sourced in the US. We meet this uh, uh, requirement. And in fact, we've already delivered by America compliant buses in the United States. And we have very good control of what we're doing. We actually control all of our intellectual property that we have on our buses. And we design uh, the buses up here in Canada and the US for US and, and for Canada. In order to really control what we're doing, um, uh, this new system that we put in place, it's called the Siemens PLM software team center. Uh, it really what it does is it, it helps provide product lifecycle management and having this sort of system in place is what has enabled us to actually produce the new uh, vicinity lightning EV buses. Now I talked about, you know, what do you have to do to sell in, in the U.S.? Well, there's a couple of criteria if you want to bid on Federal Transportation Administration uh, funded purchase um, uh, uh, tenders. Uh, the two high qualifications you have to meet, you have to, you have to have had an Altoona test done. All of our buses to date are Altoona tested, the ones that we're currently selling. Uh, and we've actually met best in class for the testing that we've done. You need to meet your Buy America compliancy, which is 70% U.S. content, and you need to assemble the bus in the United States. And that's, that's where our Washington State uh, factory comes, uh, comes into play. The FTA funding, why it's so important is it can provide up to 80% of the purchase price to the transit authorities that are applying for the funding. This next slide gives us a little bit about our, our you know, time frame and where we come from and what we've done. So we've, we've been around since 2008. So, you know, what I like to say, we're not a startup company. Uh, we have... We, we started up here in, in British Columbia. We started with a strategic partnership with BC Transit to design and manufacture the mid-sized buses. There currently wasn't anything in the marketplace that was meeting their requirements. It took us quite a while, about five years or so, and we got our first order in 2013, certified the buses, really started to gain some traction in 2017. In 2019, we met our Buy America compliancy, and now in 2020, we are um, selling, and I, I'd like to point out that we uh, this this year in, in 
in 2020, we announced a, a very large order uh, to uh, one of the uh, large U.S. Uh, airlines, uh, a $40 million order uh, for our product. Um, management, we have a strong management team in place. This allows us to actually achieve what we want. I, like I said, I'm the president and, and uh, uh, CEO of the corporation. We've got a very strong CFO that's actually got um, world experience. Um, we've got a very strong board of directors. Uh, we, I like to say, you know, our uh, operations is running like a Swiss clock. We have a very strong uh, COO with uh, Jonathan uh, Lesowich. Um, and just, just all around rounded and ready uh, for, um, for the uh, uh, insurge in, in business that we're, we're trying to pick up in the U.S. Um, I think I missed one slide here. One of the key points that I actually want to point out when I say that we're not a startup company, what we have here in the next, uh, over the next couple of quarters is we're delivering over $50 million in orders. That's over 100 buses that, uh, that we have for deliveries, both in Canada and the U.S. So uh, uh, by when I say we're not a startup, uh, we, we have some pretty substantial orders coming in the next couple of quarters. The other thing that I'd like to uh, point out is that we'd like to enhance our um, awareness and allow for U.S. investors to... Um, uh, to buy and trade our stock uh, a lot easier than what it is today. So we have engaged uh, a company, Digital Offering, which is an investment uh, uh, banker in, in the U.S. to help us uplist to the, um, to the NASDAQ. And we are planning over the next uh, you know, short period of time, four to six months, to actually have an uplisting uh, uh, to the NASDAQ. And with that, I think I've, I've covered most of the points that I want. I'll turn it over to uh, Paul here to open it up for any questions that anybody may have. Hello. <laughs> yeah, I apologize for that. Um, thank you very much for the presentation. It's interesting, a very interesting story. Um, why don't we start with overall what uh, you sort of talked about that 22,000, you know, market potential. Um, where are you as far as, and then you're targeting 10% market share on that, am I correct? Yes, yes, we are. We're looking, uh, when I look at that, you know, the 22,000 in the, in the uh, uh, smaller light duty product, um, we see a runway, really a, a pretty substantial runway of, of uh, a thousand buses um, to ramp up to very quickly in that market space. Uh, I think that, you know, we have a product that uh, is, is uh, really, I think, quite superior than, than what, uh, what the competition is on uh, in the light duty market. Okay, and then um, can you highlight the the decision to build, you know, in the U.S.? It, it, um, you know, I hear you loud and clear that you need to assemble in the U.S., um, but building a new facility for a thousand units when you already have contract manufacturing capability for two thousand, can you just talk about the dynamics of that, and then also maybe highlight how much it's going to cost to build that facility? or complete that facility because it sounds like it's already underway and then the timing of when you'll be up and running there. Great, thanks. Yeah, we, uh, we've engaged in uh, um, building the, uh, the facility already. We, we should be completed on the facility. I would think by Q3, the uh, facility should be completed and we're looking to actually start some production up by Q4. Uh, you know, moving into you know, why uh, the logistics of, of putting a facility in the U.S.? Well, if we look at, you know, the U.S. market really wants to see a presence down there, and you need to have your final assembly in order to compete on some of these uh, Buy America uh, projects. And uh, just generally, um, uh, you know, to be able to be competitive, you, you need to assemble in, in the U.S. And having contract assembly wasn't enough I mean, it's not, that doesn't um, meet the final assembly in the U.S. standard for you? That, that is correct, yeah. Okay. So in, in order to meet it, we, we need to assemble completely in the United States ourselves. 
Okay, great. And then with the um, change of administration, you know, the inauguration today, does that potentially change anything from the standpoint of, you know, the environment that you've been operating under under for the last four years? Well, it certainly does. You know, if you look at the industry in whole, um, the industry is moving towards electric. You know, everybody wants to be uh, as green as possible. And definitely, you know, the Biden administration, uh, you know, has stated that it wants to uh, uh, have greener vehicles on the roads. And uh, I think it's just, uh, it's going to help the overall sales. Great. And um, I get, if we can go back to the Washington facility, how much are you spending on that Washington facility? Well, we're, we're targeting, we feel it's going to cost us about $10 million to put the facility up and get it into operation. And sorry, that's 10 million U.S. or Canadian? Uh, that would probably end up being 10 million U.S. Okay. And then when you look at sort of your strategic, I mean, selling, expanding the dealer network, I mean, it it sounds like there's, you know, your comment about dealers are looking for product. Um, is there going to be a certain region you're going to target initially? Um, I assume just sort of the Western you know, the Western uh, part of the country just because of where the manufacturing is. But can you just sort of uh, give us an idea of sort of how you're going to roll out into the U.S.? Into the US? Yeah, we want to expand our, our, our dealer presence in, in the U.S. Um, we need to get coverage in most of the states. You know, the, a lot of the, a lot of the uh, states, you need to have brick and mortar. So we're just in the process now of expanding our, our network uh, uh, for sales. You know, particularly, you know, we got to concentrate, if we want to sell in the EV market, the biggest EV market is California. So we really want to bring somebody online that, uh, that has a good presence uh, in, in the California market space. But not only that, for all of our product, um, uh, we, need, we, do, we do need a, a bigger um, presence um, for marketing in the U.S. Uh, like I said before, uh, Paul, about 90% of our business traditionally has been on the Canadian side, um, where, you know, it should be flipped and 90% of our business should be in the U.S. And that's really our concentration is to, you know, work the, uh, work the deals, work the tenders and, uh, and get more product in the U.S. And, and that, that's why we need the, the factory in Washington State. The Washington State facility really helps us out a lot, too, because uh, our headquarters being up... Um, uh, in on the Vancouver side, we're about a 30 minute drive from headquarters down to where the, the property that we've, we've chosen. And we've chosen an area that's uh, uh, close to the Bellingham International Airport. So our customer base, when they're taking delivery of the product, can, can fly right in and take delivery out of our, out of our uh, manufacturing facility. Great. Um, when you look at, you know, that thousand units, um, that you'll be able to manufacture in Washington state. Is that, do you think that gets you, you know, potentially visible visibility for the next two or three years, and then you potentially expand there or look somewhere else or sort of, can you give us some flavor for sort of how you might think about expanding further into the U S well, we see, you know, and that's why I try to point out, you know, we have different market segments. So we have the heavy duty market, which we've uh, traditionally been in. And that's what we've done exceptionally well on the Canadian side. Uh, you know, we have, uh, we're pretty much in every major transit authority across Canada. And we need to, you know, generate that same momentum into the U.S. Um, the U.S., uh, uh, and to get that, we, we have to expand the network out. Our sales pipeline, our, on our sales, what we should be uh, looking at is, you know, on the light duty side, we definitely see, you know, capacity there of, of, of um, controlling and dominating 10% of the market. And that's, that's 2,200 units a year. And on our heavy duty side, you know, we should be able to increase that volume up considerably. You know, if we had to look at our roadmap and where we see ourselves going over the next, you know, time frame, definitely uh, we can see ourselves getting up to those 3,000 units over a, over a, a stronger period of time. Okay. And then when you talk about the 50 million of orders, um, that should be, you know, pretty positive for cash flow over the next two quarters or so. Is there 
a margin that we could look at that a cash flow mar or a cash margin that we could look at that how much cash that might generate? Well, when we're looking at, like I said, we've got at least $50 million worth of orders to deliver. Uh, those orders, generally speaking, we target for 20% uh, uh, gross margins on it. So we've got a substantial amount of uh, profitability coming in over the next couple of quarters. Uh, and I think that's what really what sets us aside from some of the competition. You know, when you look at the at the uh, at the space and some of the competition, particularly on the EV side, uh, and the valuations going on, uh, you know, I think that we're pretty much well ahead of what uh, what some of our our comps are going to uh, look like when we get onto the uh, when we get onto the Nasdaq. And is there isn't any reason to believe that? the U.S. market is going to be different from a margin standpoint than the Canadian market? No, it, it, they should run about the same. Okay, great. And remember, that, that's what we target for. Uh, uh, some of these vehicles, like when we get into clean diesels and uh, even EVs, I, I do believe they could have uh, better margins than that. But, you know, when we're stating out what are we, uh, what is our target, our target's always been to target for a minimum of 20%. And great. Um, Oh, the other thing too that I might might add too, when I you know when I state we're not a startup, you know, with our orders that we have and our buses that are in operation today, we have a pretty substantial uh, reoccurring parts revenue that that comes in uh, quarter after quarter, you know, month over month. Uh, we have uh, over 500 buses in service here in Canada alone, um, and you know now we're closing on quite a few uh, with these new orders that we got in the U.S. So that, that does give a, a nice reoccurring revenue. And the margins on parts traditionally are in that 30 to 40% range. Okay. And then if you look at the competitive landscape in the U.S., it seems like growth is going to be, you know, a positive from the standpoint of, you know, letting the market, the market growth enough is going to be, you know, sufficient to enable you to penetrate the market. But, are, who are your serious competitors in the U.S.? Um, can you just highlight them and just sort of whether you're seeing, you know, any pushback from them from a st pricing standpoint or just, a, you know, shutting you out of dealers or anything like that? No, you know, the, the U.S., you know, it's easy enough to take a look and see where your, where your market competitors are. You know, uh, definitely New Flyers, number one, and then there's a few other ones uh, around them. Um, but, you know, we have, when we look at our product and what we do, you know, we try to concentrate on, on our own product and making sure that it's competitive in, in our market space. You know, to go back to our EV, that's, the EVs are, seem to be, you know, the, what's on everybody's minds these days. We really took our time uh, in evaluating and entering the, the, the electric vehicle space. You know, by choosing the, the, the partners and choosing the, the uh, the components that we have in it, we set ourselves aside from our competition. And I think that's what's really going to generate the sales. You know, we've built our electric vehicle to actually go out there and be able to plug into any standard uh, outlet. You know, if you have a 220 outlet um, uh, in your garage or in your uh, facility, uh, our, our bus can actually go in there and, and sit right in and charge, charge uh, either on a quick charge or an overnight charge. And a lot of the competition, particularly in the heavy duty space, you need to bring in a substantial amount of infrastructure to charge a, you know, a bigger bus. So we've tried to make it as user friendly as we can. You know, um, so any driver can drive it and any garage can, can charge it and, and bring it in at a super competitive price. When you look at you know, what I'll say on our uh, EV model, uh, by taking our time, we chose automotive style components that go into it. automotive components. Um, when you look at an automotive uh, a car or something, they're gearing up for millions of components uh, or millions of cars to be sold per year. Not like in the heavy duty, you know, on, on this transit side where you've got, you know, 6,000 heavy duty transit buses sold per year. Uh, in the automotive industry, you got you got to gear up for a million. So by choosing, you know, particularly I'll use the battery, you know, the BMW battery pack that we put in ours, it comes from, it comes from BMW. It's cooled with a Freon gas in it. So it's quite a bit um, lighter and more compact. And lighter and more compact means that you can go a further distance. Uh, 
It's all, uh, you know, your power to weight ratio on your, on your electric vehicles. So I think once we get ours in the market and people can actually see what a competitive advantage is, it, it really sets us aside from the competition. And that's, you know, back to your question, the competition, uh, you know, we, we design our buses to actually compete. Great. And it, it's, it seems like you, you're further along in sort of reliability and performance than maybe some others too, William. Would you highlight that as a, as a competitive advantage? Well, absolutely. On all of our uh, vehicles, you know, we've been in the market for a while. One of the things I touched uh, on here earlier was the Altoona test. You know, now we still got Altoona test our electric vehicle, which will go in uh, as soon as we bring the vehicles in. But um, on our heavy duty vehicles, they tested best in class. So that's, that's quite, quite an achievement. So, you know, we've engineered the vehicle to actually last. And that same engineering has gone into our, our EV vehicle as well. So we're, we're excited. Uh, you know, the market, um, U.S. market definitely is where we want to be. You know, the Canadian market is, you know, what people like to say is 10% of the size of the U.S. market. We've really done well here in Canada. So that's why, you know, we're expanding and concentrating our efforts on the U.S. And particularly, you know, looking at getting the uh, that U.S. Uh, uplisting on the uh, – on the NASDAQ to allow, uh, you know, investors to actually get in and, uh, and buy and sell our, uh, our stock. Well, when we wrap it up there, William, I really appreciate your time, your presentation and loved and uh, it's been very informative. We've taken a couple questions from the, the audience and that's always a good thing. And I really appreciate your participation in NobleCon 17. Well, thank you. We, we're very excited. Um, thank you for, uh, for having us on. You're welcome. And I look forward to uh, seeing what holds uh, 2021 holds. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah.